In this problem, let's check out a frictionless system. One weight pulling the other. Let's get the tension and weight two in terms of weight one. We got a 12 degree angle for the ramp, frictionless pulley, cannon, and that's pulled by. <laughs> A very bad monkey, which I'm sure you'll agree with me, needs to be punished. I mean, severely, you know, like corporal punishment, you know what I mean? All right, so. Free body for the monkey. So we have X and Y coordinates I'm establishing here. And we have weight two, it's the monkey. The tension acting upward. Well, if it's, very important, constant motion. That really makes this problem quite simple. I'm not sure why I'm giving you that simple of a problem and not making it accelerate, but there's a point to be made here, I think. Some of the forces in the Y is zero. T, is, T minus W2 is zero. The tension equals the weight. No acceleration. Hopefully you know if it's accelerating, then the tension and the weight are not the same. Free body for weight one, the cannon. Now we got that 12 degree angle, X and Y. The tension acts along the X direction. So we're basically rotating the coordinate system within the problem. That's okay, as long as we're consistent with that in the free body for the particular object we're describing. So weight 1x straight down, normal x in the y direction. We're going to break weight 1 into its components, w1 cosine of 12, w1 sine of 12, wiggle out the original. Since we know the sum of the forces in x is 0 because there is no acceleration, constant motion, T, that's this, minus W1 sine of 12 equals 0. So T is weight 1 sine of 12, and that's also weight 2 because tension and weight 2 are the same. So it's 0.21 times weight 1, which is W2 in terms of W1. Then the normal is W1 cosine of 12, which is 0.98 W1. So there you go. Let's do another elevator problem. This time it's accelerating. It is not in equilibrium. So sum of F is MA. We're going to find the tension in the cable, bringing the 800 kilogram mass, the elevator, moving down at 10 meters per second. We're going to bring it to rest in 25 meters. So there's the whole problem. So free body, we have the weight and we have the tension. Of course the tension has to be greater than the weight because it's got to accelerate upward so that it comes to rest in 25 meters. All right, so sum of Fy equals May. That would be the tension minus, well, it over here. There's the tension force vector. Minus mg is equal to ma, in this case the y direction. So t is equal to ma plus mg, m times a plus g. Along with that we're going to use the kinematics equation that we have a distance, known velocities, before and after, and so we're going to solve for the acceleration. So let's do that. Acceleration v squared is 0 minus well, 100, negative 100 over 2 times negative 50. 2 meters per second squared. There's your acceleration. And let's get the tension. Plug the numbers in. 9440 newtons. Let's consider the previous problem. But this time we're going to put a scale in the elevator. Woman's going to stand on it, and we're going to figure out what the reading of the scale is. And once again, a disturbing sound. Hopefully you're used to it by now. All right, so what's the reading on the scale? A 50 kilogram woman? Well, this is a force of woman on scale. So we're kind of looking at the scale's point of view because the scale is the one giving us the information. We're reading the scale. The scale is responding to forces. And it's responding to the force of the woman on the scale. In addition to that, we have the normal force. The scale pushes up on the woman. All right, so this is a that is a force 
that is a force on the woman. Force the woman on scale, of course, is the is not on the woman, it's on the scale. So that's not exactly a free body force diagram. What we're looking for is the normal force. Because the normal force is the force of the scale that causes it to produce a reading. And that's going to be the same as the force of the woman, right? So free body force diagram on the woman. We have the weight of the woman, 490 newtons, and the normal force. So there is a free body. Now, the acceleration was 2 meters per second squared, and the sum of the forces in the Y is MA, which is the normal, this force, minus this force, which is MA, and therefore the normal is M times AY plus G. Plug the numbers in, out pops the number. Now that's 590 newtons. Make note that that is greater than the weight of the woman of 490 newtons. What that is, is the apparent weight that the person experiences as a result of this additional force from accelerating the mass. In addition to mg, you have the ma. And a person feels the force that the scale reads. It is the apparent weight. All right, so let's check out this frictionless system. Find the acceleration and tension of a spider web. There's our cannon. <laughs> and our new friend, the spider. So free body diagram for M1, X and Y defined. We have weight, we have normal, we have tension. Acceleration in the X direction. Some of those forces in the X is tension. So tension is MA, MAX in this case. Sum of FY is normal minus M1G, which is M1AY, which is zero. Free body for M2. So we again define our coordinate system. The weight of the spider the tension in the web, and the acceleration. The acceleration is going to be downward for the spiders from the spider's point of view. Sum of Fy is M2G minus T, which is M2A. Now, we have these two expressions, the sum of the forces in the Y and the X, but really this is just a transposition, so to speak, from the X direction to the Y direction. These accelerations are really the same thing. Okay. So what we're going to do, I'm going to add these. Let's add these together and see what happens. So we have sum of x. Sum of fx is tension, m1a. fy, m2g minus t equals m2a. Let's add these. So if we add them, then on the left hand side, the t's go away. We have M2G equals M1A plus M2A. Notice I've dropped the subscript because AX and AY are the same thing in this case. So that's M1 plus M2A. And we have our formula for acceleration. Now, I want to admit that I've complexified this solution just a little bit. We went through and did it pretty brute force. But look at this. If you look at the original picture, you can recognize that A is equal to sum of F over M. Well, the sum of the forces acting on the system is M2G, the weight of the spider, divided by the total mass, which is M1 plus M2. So you could write this expression down just by inspection. Now, the tension would follow suit. You have the acceleration, and then the tension is going to act against gravity for the spider. And you can, since you have the acceleration, you can solve for the tension. But let's go ahead and finish this problem. T is M1A. And so let's just go ahead and substitute that acceleration in for A. And there's the wonderful result, so coveted. And let's do this fun problem. The acceleration as determined from the 
angle right off of a protractor of an accelerating object. So we're going to accelerate this protractor. And the angle alpha is going to be the angle that the object is swinging, it's basically in the opposite direction of the acceleration. That object is a little bug. So let's do a free body, x and y. So we have the weight, and we have the tension, and that is a free body force diagram for that bug. Those are the two real forces acting on it. Alternate interior angles, this is alpha from the vertical. So here is the x component of t and the y component of t. Notice sine and cosine, not cosine and sine, respectively. Wiggle out the tension and sum of fx. It's going to be t sine of alpha, and that's ma. Sum of fy, t cosine of alpha minus mg is ma, which is zero. No acceleration in the vertical direction. What can we do with this? Well, we have t cosine of alpha is mg. We had t sine of alpha is mg. Now, t, I'm sorry, ma. T cosine of alpha is mg. We're really looking for this a. Let's divide these. Here we go. T's go away, m's go away, and we have the coveted result. a is g tangent of theta.